Hello and welcome to the Budget Games Review, a series where I review games that are both inexpensive and low-spec PC friendly. Today I am going to review a tower defense game which is called Bloons TD6. If for some reason you cannot tell what you do in this game, uh, well, you kinda just defend Bloons from reaching the exit with your towers. Some of the towers are monkeys, some of them are monkeys with guns, and some of them, well, aren't really monkeys, but eh, whatever. To play the game, you simply choose a map and a difficulty, place some towers and then hit start. You will earn money by popping balloons, and then you can buy more towers with the money, and then with the more towers, you can pop even more balloons to earn even more money, and then you can use the more money to buy more towers, and you just repeat that process until the balloons eventually sadly overwhelm you. Now that's just a really simplified explanation. And in reality, you'll have to worry about things such as lead or MOAB popping power in your defense, but you know what, let's not worry about that for now and talk about the towers. There are a total of 13 different heroes and 22 towers that you can buy. You can only choose one hero to use each game, and they can only be placed once, and they will level up over time. Each of the 13 heroes are unique in their own way. Some of them also give out buffs to other towers. Each of the towers are separated into four different categories, primary, military, magic, and support. Generally speaking, each tower has three upgrade paths. You can only choose two of them and each path contains five tiers of upgrades. If you have no idea what that means, this image shows all the possible combinations of upgrades for the boomerang monkey, which is just one of the 22 towers. Now that's what I call variety. Some tower upgrades grant towers abilities. Most of those abilities can either allow you to do specific actions or to temporarily increase your popping power. But why would you need so many variants of towers? Well my friend, that's because there are also many variants of balloons. For example, the black ones are resistant to explosions, the white ones are resistant to freezing, the purple ones are resistant to magical stuff, the lead balloon is resistant to sharp attacks, etc. Some balloons come with special properties. For instance, the camo balloons can only be seen by towers that have camo detection. Fortified balloons have extra health, and regrow balloons can return to their stronger ancestors after you've popped them. Then you have the Moab class balloons. These are strong blimps that are very tough to pop. The ZOMG puts out 4 BFBs when popped, 1 BFB puts out 4 Moabs when popped, and 1 Moab puts out 4 ceramic balloons when popped. They kind of act like Matryoshka dolls. Then you have the DDT, it is a camo lead blimp, which requires some very specific upgrades and combinations of towers to pop. DDTs are often beginner killers because of their special properties. Last but not least, we have the BAD. This guy is extremely difficult to pop and will put out 2 ZOMGs and 3 DDTs when you actually do so. This guy appears in round 100, so it acts kind of like a boss fight. There are 56 maps that range from beginner, intermediate, advanced, and expert in terms of difficulty. The maps are actually quite beautiful and have lots of different themes with vibrant colors. Some elements of the maps are even interactive, like this pigeon that flies away when you click on it. Some maps even have layout changing mechanics such as cargo. This map opens up a new path for Moabs on round 40, forcing the players to smartly place their towers so that they can both hit balloons and Moabs. I am honestly quite surprised by the quality of maps here. It really exceeds my expectations. All of those towers, balloons, and map mechanics sound quite overwhelming, right? But do not fret. The game is actually quite beginner friendly. You basically start off with easier maps and difficulty settings, and it will get harder as you progress. On easy mode, you only need to pop a Moab at the end. On the hardest difficulty, you have to pop a bad. Once you think you've mastered the game, you can go and do some challenges with horrifying modifications. Lots of hard challenges won't simply require you to just buy the towers with the highest DPS that is within your budget. Instead, you have to completely understand the balloon's properties and figure out what towers can finish the job. As you can see, 
This game is both easy to pick up and its mechanics are deep enough for hardcore players. And the best thing is, no matter how good you are at the game, hearing the sounds of balloons popping and knowing that your defense is working are just always the most satisfying things that you can have in life. Ninja Kiwi's game design made it so that everyone can enjoy playing and popping balloons. So all that I've done for now is just talking about the game on paper, you know, talking about the balloons, towers, and maps, and blah blah blah. So that's kind of boring, right? So, you know what? Let's go and take a look at an example of a game, alright? Now I'm playing the game with Magic Monkey Only Mode, where I'm only supposed to use Magic Monkeys, which is the Wizard Monkey, the Super Monkey, the Ninja Monkey, and the Alchemist, and the Druid, alright? Uh, but that doesn't really matter, because Sun Tzu has said that if your enemy is secure at all points, be prepared for him. And I'm gonna be prepared for this Magic Monkey Only Mode. That's why I chose Obin as my hero. Because he gives out buffs to magic monkeys. He gives it, uh, I think, more range, more pierce. I don't know. He just gives out buffs, and that's why I chose him, alright? And Obin actually, you know, uh, does a decent job in popping balloons, and he can pop blood balloons, which is a very, very nice addition. Then I put down the ninja monkey because uh, the Obin doesn't have camo detection. And ninja, even without upgrades, the 000 ninja already see camo balloons, and that's why I chose him to be alongside Obin. Then the next thing I'm gonna do is worry about camo leads, because, well, yeah, the ninja has camo detection, but it doesn't have lead popping power. That's why I put down a wizard monkey with dragon's breath and monkey sense, so that he can burn those camo lead balloons with ease, alright? Next thing I'm gonna do is put down an alchemist. Why did I put down the alchemist? Now, the alchemist has an upgrade called the berserker brew, and it gives out buffs to nearby monkeys by throwing some kind of potions on them. And this buff actually works really well with Ninja, because this buff is good for monkeys that only attacks once in a while. And you know, the Ninja, he doesn't always like put out shurikens, right? He just puts them out you know, once in a while, throw them when, you know, he's feeling it. And that's why I chose to put down the Alchemist. And then I'm gonna worry about Moab popping power, because, you know, as you can see, my monkeys doesn't really cover a lot of the tracks. And that's why I put down a Super Monkey. A Super Monkey has pretty good... Moab popping power, especially when it's upgraded to Dark Knight. And then the next thing I'm gonna worry about is cleanup, because, you know, all of these monkeys does a really good job in popping balloons. You know, popping Moabs, they can do it, but what about things inside the Moab? Even with the Super Monkey, my defense doesn't really cover a lot of the tracks. So I put down a Necromancer. This guy, when he pops balloons, he kind of revives them as his, I don't know, zombie, and then let those zombies spawn from behind the tracks. Even if balloons actually sneak through the defense of my monkeys, those zombies can still clean them up. And last but not least, let's put down a druid, because, you know, why not? I've used all of the other four magic monkeys, and then that's what has won us the game. As you can see, playing this game requires a lot of brain juices because the monkeys, you know, some of them work well together, some of them don't, and each of them has specific uses. So, you know, this game is really deep. If you're willing to learn it, it is a very rewarding experience. Now that we know the game is fun, let's see how it runs on a low-end PC, aka my old laptop with Intel HD graphics 3000, not even 4000. 3000 is actually from 10 years ago, and you know, and it's on a laptop, so it's extremely low-end. And this game actually ran surprisingly well. The frame rate is almost fully locked and only occasionally stutters when I'm placing a new tower, but honestly, even if it stutters like 10 times per minute, it really won't affect the playability much since it's only a tower defense game. In addition, the game is dirt cheap, especially when on sale. That's why I think it is definitely worth the price and it is one of the best low-end PC games. That's the end of the video, thanks for watching and I hope I can see you next time. Bye-bye.